to move through us, God. We lift each and every one up that is, Lord, maybe sick, God, not feeling well, oh God. Heavy hearts on this morning. We lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will mend them, that you will heal them right now, God. So we just give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor in Jesus' name.
thank God for everyone who has given to the ministry and continues to sow into the ministry. Amen. That we continue the work of the Lord. There are several ways that you are able to send your tithes and offerings. You can do so by cash out, which is dollar sign true church. SC. Again, it's dollar sign, true church SC. Also, you can call in with debit or credit cards at 803 597 9100. Also, 803 977 3440. We thank God for the ability to be able to give. Amen. Because I know I have been at a point in my life that I didn't have anything. But when I start trusting God and start honoring God with my first fruits, I saw God come through each and every time. Amen. So let us just look to the word of God concerning giving in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. Amen. Now, remember this. Who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously will also reap generously. So let each man give just what he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace come abundance to you. Amen. So that you may have all that you need at all times. Amen. And that you will have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Amen.
on this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
Um, so we just want to trust God and keep his head and pray about it. Amen. Don't get me very well for Because if you, if you see that you're weak, if you're well. Thank God. So don't think. Don't think now. Keep going. Amen. Amen. Keep going. I bless the Lord. I um, put it on Facebook. If I got to watch me, I put it on there. And got to come out with them with different um, attire for what you don't know, used to be wearing on Sunday. I want to be stupid and booty. But today I came in my leisure with my cat or whatever. Because I want the man in the hat to match up with the man in the suit. Amen. 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 I just told you a little bit of that for you. You're a that you know that the man in the hat is the personal man, the personal life of the man. And the man in the suit is the God of life. And those who have to line up, you know, I, I thank God for showing me that, convicted me of that. And um, I thank God for repentance. Thank God that he's a forgiving God, he's a merciful God, and he's patient. Amen. Somebody say patient. Patient. He's patient with us, and we are with people. Amen. We, we're right first love about a couple of times, but God is patient, man, and I love him for it. And so he reminds me, he said, bring the man in the hat to church today. I'm going to sanctify him and make him holy again. Amen. He said, bring that man in the hat this when you go to church. So I invite somebody. I encourage God to invite somebody. You might want to invite yourself. But if I come out here to come to you, like right, yeah. really you, sir. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what I do. That's what you see me all the time. Some disrespect to the, um, my position of my office and just God is using me in this season to let you know that you can be saved and still be casual. Right. You can be yeah. saved yeah. and dressed like this. Because listen, it ain't about the clothes you put on. It's about the righteousness that you wear. And that righteousness comes from your faith in Jesus Christ. So it ain't about so much of the suit. Tie or sweat suit in the hat. It's just how you carry yourself in the suit and how you carry yourself in the sweat suit in the hat that matters. And so today I brought the man in the hat and sweat suit with me. I didn't know he was going to be in because he didn't know he didn't come on that in. Amen. You know, every time he had to check himself and he had to bring the old man back in. He had to come back in. He tried to slide to the side a little bit. And God is good. He'll correct you on it. And when he corrects you on it, he don't correct you on it just to beat you down. He corrects you on it to make it right. Right. Amen. You're not going to walk with the camera. Maybe I'm going to walk. <laughs> he, 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 he does it so that he, when he convicts you, don't ever take it personal when God is working on you. Because the Bible says a good person that God has started in you, he's going to complete it in Christ Jesus. And so we got to give God glory that he ain't been in great any of us yet. You ought to thank the Lord when you follow through a sin or anything that God directs you. Just thank God. Don't get so upset with beating yourself up with. Um, having a Peter party, face up to it, hold up to it, give God the glory, get back up and keep on. Because God ain't finished with you yet. He's not finished with any of us yet. And when you point out something you like need to be corrected, don't make that God, he's a fair God, and he can't judge because why he is what? God. God can't judge you. He does. Just get it right. Amen. Amen. So he told me that, he said, bring that man in that hat and that, that sweatsuit with you to church, right in the church, and let him preach, because he can preach, and he's a good man, but he just gets, he, he starts to get off a little bit, and I need to bring him on back in. So today I'm the man in the hat, but he'll leave me today, the man in the hat, the man in the suit, and he's the stage of night, amen? Amen. Amen. For his glory, come on the blessing. Come on and give his glory. You are the blessing, man, the Lord. We thank God for being in the house of the Lord again. And once again, I thank God for when I my act that we have the dynamic moment of God here. Let's yeah. give her praise, honor, and glory. The Lord, our Savior, Pastor, 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 so when you know somebody that's been packed your life in a powerful way, it don't hurt you to tell them that. Right. You know, so thank you so much. You did great to us. You did great to our family. We appreciate you, man. We came a long way because of you. And you come a long way. And she does such an awesome job. She does it from the heart. I never think about it. So dedicated to her walk. And I'm not trying to put her up to make a perfect understanding. She's dedicated to committed to the Lord. She loves her. Amen. And he loves her. Amen. And it shows. So we just thank God for now and him to use you in your capacity, man, and even being able to just pour out stuff to you, to bring stuff to you, and, and you don't take that, uh, man, it's too much, but you go to God, like you always do. 
and God always said a word that in the word of direct encouragement, whatever it may be, He always uses you to get it right. So Amen. Thank Let's give our God some glory. Amen. 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 Also, want to God, we bless God. We are blessed to know you as a friend, as a sister in Christ, as a husband. Um, we just want to be that God. We love you. God bless you. And all my staff here, I'm so blessed and grateful to have you guys. You guys are something tremendous. It's good to have a circle of people that got your back. It's good to have a circle of people that you can call on when you're in trouble. It's good to have a circle of people that you can lean on when you're going through something and they'll hold you up. Amen. I believe, and I said it before, and I see it happen. I said, this church will be made up of people who go through all types of things. We've got some of everything that God has brought off the street, that brought out the darkness, and put it under one roof. So if any one of us is going through something, you got somebody that can relate to you. And, 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 and you got somebody you can talk to about it. And it's just the way God has presented it. And amen. So I just thank God for my own deacon who was there for me and was able to call him and lean on him. It is so important when you got people that you can lean on. It wasn't a pastor name, it was a, a brother to brother name. I thank God for my deacon, 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 and thank you for my name. And I thank God for my daughters. Minister Stewart, Minister Anthony, they were tremendous and just support me. And Father, up and come and see me and check on me and love me and hug me. God bless y'all guys. And it's good when you got a good circle of knowledge of people that you have in your circle, man, because you just don't know what it means to them to know what it means for you. Amen? Amen. So, man, that is great, man. I'm an awesome woman that's that well. Oh, God. Today is the way to God for us on the day. We got the, we got the great verse on today. I'm very excited about it. That is all we're excited. Y'all said, the why? Are y'all ready for the word of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Let's get into it. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. We got two scripture lessons. That's how good it is. It's so good God gave us two scripture lessons. Amen. And we still in the series that you be for a new year. Amen. Let me tell you, you have to help somebody. Listen, if you made a mistake in, in this walk in your new year, get up. Come on. Get up. You still, it's still one year, it's still one month in this year, so have a right about it. Yes. You still get it right. Amen. God ain't mad at you, Lord knows I can't be. So you still can get up. Amen. And you mean for a what? New year. Yes. Going forward in the Lord. Amen. Galatians 6, if you got it, say amen. Amen. If you ain't got a watch, my friend, if you got it, got your notes, you're ready to hear from God, follow me as we get into the word of God. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5 reads, Brothers and sisters, if anyone is part of the sin, you who live by the Spirit, notice what he said, you who live by what? Spirit. The Spirit. That's you who live by the faith. Don't you get involved. But you who live by the Spirit, to restore that person gently. Amen. Let's look at that right quick. He said, you who live by the wet spirit, you restore that person who is falling into sin what? Well, gently. That don't mean you put a gun to them out, pick at them, talk about them, put them down. He said, gently. Amen. Restore your brothers and sisters. But watch yourselves. Mm -hmm. Or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone, here we go, thinks that they are something when they are not, yeah. they deceive themselves. Yeah. Don't think you're too high up there that you can't fall. Right. Come on, somebody. Don't think you know a couple of scriptures because you've been in Christ for 10, 20 years. Don't think you're better than anybody. They say, Me, you who think you stand, take heed. Yeah. least you fall. And he said, if any one of us, and see, this is the good thing about Christ. He lets us know no matter how good your track record is and how bad somebody else's track record in the Lord is, he said, don't deceive yourself. Come on, somebody, that's the word. Now, I'm just preaching the word. I'm just delivering the message. Don't give the message. I just brought the message. Amen. I got the track you going, and I'm ready to run. Amen. But he said, if you think that you are something, because there's a lot of people about Christ that got an old blown. I, um, um, a, um, um, evaluation of themselves. There's a lot of people about a Christ who got, they, they just think they arrived and they don't do anything wrong and that they got every high, they cross every T and they kind of hold this image, they kind of hold up these brands. But behind the scenes, yeah. and God says, if you think that you are something, you deceive yourselves. 
Even if you suggest your own actions, then you can take pride in yourself alone without comparing yourself to someone else. We ain't in this for competition. Can I say that again? Walk through these scriptures with you. We ain't gonna be hooping and hollering. I want you to learn something. I want to teach you something. The Holy Spirit is here to talk to you. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. We ain't in no competition. We are supposed to be on the same team. Don't be comparing yourself to this person. See, that's what throws you, throws you off. If you don't do it like this person, you feel you ain't doing it right. If you feel like you're doing it better because you do it this way, it ain't no one way better than the other in Christ. God did. You will give, you will give, you will give, you will give, all the gifts. Kevin out there, a lot of that gift, those that are right. He gave all y'all your own unique gift and style. Do your way God gave you. Do it the way God gave you. And quit the pen, that's why we're going we to get better together. Right. Because we're going to stop comparing churches. Right. Mm -hmm. This church better than your church. Our praise team better than your praise team. We're going to cut that out. Our preacher better than your preacher. I thank God for that. I praise that I get, but I'm nothing without Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. I ain't going to see myself. I'm nothing without it. So it ain't no, I'm better than any other preacher. I can do it better than this person, that person. We're on the same team. We're on the same team. He said, stop comparing yourself to one another. But we should carry each other's own load. We should be there to help each other, not hurt each other. Tell somebody, if I can't help you, I won't hurt you. Yeah, I can't help you. You got to say that again. But we said that kind of slow. Tell somebody, if I can't help you, I, help you. I, definitely, I definitely won't hurt you. Won't hurt you. Come on and get God some glory. Come on and bless your name. Now, you got that one. Will you turn away the Old Testament? It's 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. Get going for it. Y'all might have to take the time. I'm glad I got to do it. I'm going to say, hey, you got a good time. So God is trying to teach us all something today. There's no comparing one to another. No trying to be better than nobody. No throwing no shade from the pool. There's none of that stuff. We're trying to get right. Anybody with me? We're trying to just hear from God. We're trying to uphold our brothers and sisters. We're trying to grow together because we got to praise God. If we don't praise them up there, we got to be able to get along down here. Amen. Come on, somebody. And we are getting on that. Thank God the churches are doing so well now. Come on, let me give God some glory. Our brothers and sisters are doing so well. We see them out in the neighborhood. We see them doing stuff now more, even in the pandemic. God bless you, all of you. Every one of you that are still out there, you're still in the communities, you're still hosting events, you're still going and helping those in need. We thank God for you, man. Even in the pandemic, you're risking yourself being exposed to go help somebody else. I love it. When I see it, I just pray for you and continue. If there's anything that two church can do to help you, man, pick up the phone and give us a call. So we love what you're doing. I love to see it going on. It's, it is so tremendous. The body of Christ is getting so strong in the Lord. And we're going to defeat that old devil. We're going we're gonna to put him under our feet once and for all. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 7 says, So the Lord sent David to David. Nathan came to him and said, there were two men in a certain city. One was rich and the other was poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cows, but the poor man had only one little female lamb that he brought. He raised her and she grew up in his home with his daughter. She would eat, at his, eat his food and drink from his cup. She raised him in his arms and was like a daughter to him. Now the district came to the rich man. The rich man thought it would be a pity to take one of his own sheep or cattle and prepare a meal for the traveler. So he took the poor man's lamb and prepared her for the traveler. Now when David heard this, it burned him with anger against the man. I solemnly swear as the Lord lives, said David to Nathan, the man who did this certainly deserves to die. And he must pay back four times the price of the lamb because he did this and had no pity. But Nathan looked at the square down and said, you are that man. Mm. You are that man. Sermon topic for the day. Tell somebody to look at your neighbor and look at them fish and tell them it is different. When it's you. Come on, somebody.
somebody. Come on, come on, tell you about that again. David was saying, I, I swear before God that the man who did this thing needs to die. That was David's declaration for the man who took the, 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 the rich man who took the poor man who was one man. David said, You should die and pay that four times the amount. Nathan said, David, that man is you. Tell somebody in the choir to put it in the feed. It gets different. When it's you. Oh, you ain't gonna get that. And what it means when it says it gets different, that's a young folks. It don't feel the same. It don't feel the same when it's you. See, it's all different when it ain't you. But it don't feel the same when that man is you. Tell somebody it gets different. When it's you. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you now for your presence here to deliver your word. God, I thank you for now having the lips to speak, God. I thank you for allowing me to speak, God. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. We welcome his presence here. Those that are watching, we thank God for the Holy Spirit that's right there among them. Father, have your way. Forgive us, Lord, this day of our sins. Help us to love one another. We'll be so careful. To give you all the praise, honor, and glory as you draw somebody today from God and still life. We bless your holy name for it in Jesus' name. And let the church of those who love the Lord say, Amen. 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 Tell somebody it's different. It's different. When it's you. When it's you. Like I said, you just joined it and you don't understand what that thing that the young folk use. So you got to get your young folk in your life. <laughs> you got to get your young folk in your life. I got to get your young folk in my life. Keep me up on the door thing. They, they can be talking to you, you don't know what they say. They can be talking about you, you ain't gonna keep that back. They can be talking about you, I ain't gonna keep you up. Oh, guess what's going on right there? And they said, hit different. I said, what hit different mean? They said, don't feel the same for real. I said, okay, I got it now. So when God gave it, because I said, oh God, I see what you're saying now. When, when you are thinking you right, and somebody else is in sin, it feels, it feels good to you. But when it's you that has sin, it don't feel the same. See, you know what I'm saying for, for, for a person that's in sin, you got all kind of ideas of what you do to him or her or what should happen to them. But when it's you, you want something different. <laughs> you, want you want it different. That's what that means. That's what we're burning. That's what we're being. That's what we're going to kill. That's what we're going to say. That's what we're going to say. That's what we're going to say. They were going straight there and kill him. They were going straight there and kill him. They were going to play with him. And he said he burned for him. But they were going to die. So they were going to go straight to the him. But they were going to have to Last time I preached, y'all walked with me. Last time I preached, mm -hmm. I talked about the lady. Who was caught in the country. Right. I talked about how the scribes and Pharisees brought the woman to Jesus and said, the woman should be stoned according to the law. I talked about how they didn't bring the man. Mm -mm, they left him home for a home. They come to him and they just brought the woman. But tell the neighbor, it takes two to tangle. It takes two to tangle. I talked about how Jesus put the scribes and Pharisees on blast by saying, you, without sin, you who know the word, you who are teachers of the word, you who go to church every Sunday, you that are without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. Go ahead and knock the head off. Go ahead and take your brick and bust the head wide open. We'll be right here, I'll wait. I talked about how none of them could throw them. Nothing else to throw the stone. Why? Because they all had sin in their lives. See, we judge sin based on what it is. We based on how we, we rank it on how bad it is. Some things got way up to they get a scream and they something that all ain't that bad. But can I get the new flash? Sin is sin to God. You don't think it was a thought or action. New flash. Sin is sin. You know, you know, God don't labor it what's high, what's low. To him, sin is sin. We in the church, we justify sin by saying what categories it is. If it's one of the one of the one categories, then we put we put people down.
now, while we that we think that this is our little dirty mind, our little thought, like, uh, our little nasty behavior, our little uh, our funky attitude, we think that that's okay, that's a little shit. I love how we care every night, man. We think that's okay. But according to the law, seeing is seeing. But none of them grow this. None of them grow it. And I talk about how Jesus forgave the world instead of condemning her. And from there we learned a powerful lesson put down the stone. Put the stone down. Put it down. Okay? Put it down. And think of grace. Put the stone down. Go ahead and reach in your pocket. Work with me. Come on, you watch me. Work with me. Go ahead and reach in your pocket. Take out your invisible stone. And go ahead and put it down. Go ahead and sit it down. I got mine right here. Because I carry it strong in my pocket. But there's somebody that hits different with the shoe. Come on, get that strong out of the pocket. <laughs> but women, come on, get your stone out of the pocket and put it, go get your invisible stone and put it down. So you keep stones in your bra, y'all keep stones in your bra, y'all go get the stone out of your bra. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> don't get the stone out the crop and, and don't put it right here. Wherever you can hide it at, go ahead and put it right here. Don't let me get the stone from up under the seat. I love the bottom. Under the tire in the trunk. Oh. Go ahead and put it right here. Put the stone out. Because you'll find out that it is different when it's you. And if we're going to be new people, Oh God, in the new year, we must all put down our stones. Right. And let me tell you this, we must not only put them down in public, we must put our stones down in private when we fill the talk at night. Put your stones down there too. Because still the talk gets you in more trouble with God than talking in public. But still the talk, you can sit there with the one that you care for, the one that you love, the one you keep it with, and you start to talk. But you forget one thing. That God is listening. Oh, that's that gonna happen now. Mm -hmm. When you feel the talk and you love each other, you rub each other's hair, you hold each other's hand, and you talk about everybody else and what everybody else is doing, I can't believe they did this, I can't believe she or he did that. You forgot one thing. God is listening. And God don't want to hear your gospel. Can I say that again? God does not want to hear your gospel because he's always listening. He want to hear your prayer for your brother and sister who have fallen into sin. Oh, what sweet sound it is to God. And when two people are laying there, I feel the and they say, man, let's pray for brother and sister, sister. Let's pray for sister, sister, sister. sister. They get out and they, they, they even if you're on the phone doing it. And you say, man, let's go on prayer for them right now. Oh, what sweet sound it is to God here. And what a loving sight in his eyes and he can see his children going down on their knees. Um, and praying for that brother that took you that's in sin and not talking about him. Do you know how much joy that brings a father? Do you know how much joy it brings him? And do you know how much faith and blessing he gives you? A lot of our blessings are blocked because we fill a talk and we throw stones through our words. That's why God told you the power of life, life death is in the power of the tongue. We grow, we, 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 we celebrate people in their faith. But we talk about it behind their back. And you tell somebody, don't tell nobody. When I tell you this, don't tell nobody. God says, see, I'm already listening. I heard you when you, you shouldn't have told that. And we block our best, and then we start wondering why the life must not get hard. Why stuff not falling apart. And we think, if I ain't did that, I'm so perfect. You know, I don't do what such and such did. He said, but you don't know how to close it. You don't know how to put down the stone. You, the only problem I got with you, I got one thing in you. You don't know how to put down a stone. You do everything else right, but you don't know how to put the stone down. You don't know how to be quiet. You don't know how to quit gossiping about people. That's the only thing I got to get. You got everything right. You got church attendance right. You got what you're doing in the church right. You got how you work right. How you do your family right. But you got one thing I got to get you. You got a stone. You keep a stone on you. I want all the best that God has for me. So this doesn't hit me hard. It doesn't make this different. When is you? Because if I hit you, when is you?
Now, if you want to take a message for today, let me give you some history on the subject. David was king, who God had anointed. At an early age to be king, David was anointed to be king at 13. Young age, by 17, he took his reign as king. But notice this God did mighty things with David. At an early age, he was just as king ever. And at an early age, he accomplished some great men and people feared David, and David became very powerful. Because why? The hand of God was with you. The hand of God is with you. When the hand of God is with you, ain't hey, nothing to stop you. When the hand of God is on you, there's nothing to block you. Come on, somebody. I said, well, I'm about to go in. I'm about to come get you first, baby. When the hand of God is on you. And, and if you can move with the hand of God on you, ain't no more clothes going to open. It'll open for you to get there. No mountain won't fall. With the hand of God on you, before you get to the mountain of fall, it will come back in your face. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to get sideways with God and keep the hand of God off of us. Because all of what we do, all of what we do for the Lord is because the hand of God is on you. Yeah, don't lose the hand. Don't lose the hand. Don't let go of the hand. And don't make him don't don't make him take his hand off you. You ever heard that saying, don't make God take his hand off you? Because if he takes his hand off you, good God Almighty, you got to think about what he stopped and what he lost that you didn't even see because he had you covered and he didn't even allow you to see it. That that right there should be alone should be enough to say, hey, let me out if that Satan can offer me a trick me into that I'm going to compromise the hand of God on me. That he can pick it up on stone. Because it's about to hit different when it's you. But listen to this. David wasn't a perfect man. And God knew this before he knew him as king. You think God was caught by surprise with David had this? God knew what David was going to do before David did it, before David was even thought in the mind of Jesse. God already knew. That's the thing you got to realize. God said he could definitely work for you to do beforehand, before you were born, God, what you were going to do and what you wasn't going to do. Don't think that anything you do catches you by surprise. Then you're underestimating him, you're lowering him to a man's standard. You're bringing him from deity down to humanity. And be careful, Christians. Be careful of bringing God from deity down to humanity. That is a slap in his face, and we do it so, so carelessly. When we think, I can't believe they did that. Boy, God, come on, God knew what they were going to do before they did it, and he still anointed David King. He gave David, he made David King, and he knew David was going to commit adultery and have the right to um, kill him because he wanted to cover up. God knew that before he anointed David King. It didn't catch God by surprise. David just made wrong decisions. And God knew what the punishment was going to be when David did it. And he even knew David was going to try to cover it up. You can't fool God. You can't fool God. And we need to be careful about judging God's anointing. Because God knew everything about them before they were born. And yet he still caught them. Hmm. Mm. How many pastors fell and we put them down and people put them on their Facebook pages? Uh, we put them in the news about them. We, 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 we slap in the name. But you don't think God is made the people to know the Lord for them. You don't think God knew what they were going to do before they died. They ain't caught God by surprise. They caught us by surprise. And they caught us by surprise. And what should surprise us and how we react? What should surprise us and how you react to a person when they fall? Because they let you know where you are. Mm, be that there. That should be on the surprise of how you act when someone falls in your presence. Listen to this. David was a king, and we know he was anointed by God. But yet one day David fell into sin and committed adultery and murder. David not only committed adultery, he committed adultery and murder. And he's a anointed king, he's the king of Israel. The highest position you can have in the land. The man that God said in the word, be the man after my own heart. Go anoint him. He is the next king. That David is the same David that killed Uriah because he had slept with the man's wife 
And she became pregnant and he wanted to cover it up. That's the same man, David, who took his position that God had wanted him for and used it. And he abused the power of it because he stepped out of his boundary. And the Bible says that when the kings are off the war, David was in what? King. So David was supposed to be in war. They had war. David was home on the rooftop looking over there, over there, on that sheet there. And that's around the time that they come out and they knew on the rooftop because why? No man was supposed to be in the middle. No man was supposed to be home. But David was home. Oh, speaking in Greek, and David was home. And David saw it and he used his power yep. and his position because no one can say no to the king and live. No one can say no to the king and live. They can give an order for you to come. You ain't me at the charge. You are coming. And so they can literally, and they can charge him in the Bible with it, but he literally raped her because he used his power and position to sleep with her. And he used his position as king. She didn't say no. So she didn't really consent. That same day it was going by God. But God tells the king anyway, even after that. Be careful. When you start throwing the stones and God said, Lord, in the day, but what you think they should be when your brothers and your sisters fall into sin? Because if you read your word, God still tells the king. God don't ask your opinion. God knows what's in it. God knows what's in her. God knows what's in the person that's fallen. God didn't ask your opinion what you think about what that person, what that person should be, should that person do this, should that person do that. God don't consult with you about anything like that because it's his kingdom, but his work. He didn't consult with nobody about what I should do with that. You think about what kind of thing? Take a vote and let me know should I do. They can resign, should I find? He didn't ask nobody. He's God. You say there's going to be consequences. But they will still remain king. Because at home, some of y'all don't like that. Because man can't manipulate God. And that's why I'm sharing with my young brother yesterday. Know God for yourself. Because if you let people know God for you, when you fall, they'll keep you down. Or instead of trying to lift you up, they hit you in the face with a brick. I thank God when I feel like I'm God. I think I had a relationship with him for myself, a real one, that I knew if nobody forgave me, he did. And you, you think that I was going to stay down. You think I was going to stop running. You think I was going to resign. You thought I was going to retire. You got to let me coming. Because God ain't living with me yet. The best ain't yet to come. You ain't seen that yet. My best food going to be my best food. You need to wait for God to die. But I ain't gonna stop, I can't stop, and I won't stop. Because somebody hit different. When it's you. And I'm going, I'm using it for that, I'm showing you that word. God did not cancel that man's assignment. Who are we to cancel another man, another woman's assignment when God would cancel a murderer and a and a dog for assignment? We got to get it together, church. That's why put down the stone. The Bible says that David, when, 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 when he was anointed, he, 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 he committed a country and murder, and he thought he got away with it. You know he thought he got away with it. He went on to, to be king like, he like, y'all, he showed up in the past of everything. Hey, I got him. Now I'm going to let you pass. Sitting in his arm. He thought he got away with it. But God sent the prophet named Nathan to expose him. And this makes me wonder how come we got all these prophets in the body of Christ? Mm. We got a lot of prophets in the body of Christ. Everybody want to pop it up, go shy, and say, God told me to tell you this. We got a lot of them pop up like crowd in church services. But how can none of them detect when a person is insane? How come they only can pronounce blessings over you when it ain't more money that you need when it's, you need to be delivered from sin? Yeah. We got a serious problem. But they can hide the more more shine, bug and hug the God I told me to tell you, he's going to get you, he's going to work out of your faith, and you full of sin and sin. Where are the prophets that can walk up to you and say, look, 
God said, you better get it right. You better get out of that and you better get out of that fast. Where are them? Where are them? They, they pronounce the blessings over people that, that's in me deep in sin. They tell the people me deep in sin, God's going to work it out. God is going to give you a new job. God is going to give you a new house. God is going to give you all the money that you need. But no, when God sent a prophet, he sent him to the rest. Call you right out. He called the David Stanley Tennis Show. He said, no, that is so. David said, yeah. He said, listen, that was a man, right? Two men out of the back of the service city. They just sit down and He said, the day one was pretty the one before. I know you were a kid, I know you just, and I know that you were just married. I want you to tell me what you meant about this. He said, uh, the, the, the rich man had a very large number of sheep and cows. But the poor man had a one old little female man, old little strong man that he brought. He raised up, though, and when he tried to raise him, he didn't want to kill him either. Because that old man he had, he became, he became like a child for him. So then he had attacked the old little man. And, and when, 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 he, when, he, when the male grew, he would let the male eat with him. He treated the male like a child, one of his own. He was sitting at the same where he eat his food and drink with the, with the man, at the same cup. And he said, she, um, he said, thank you, man, um, and just what happened, he said, a rich man had a friend from the time. He said, a rich man had a friend, but his mother's no more. The rich man got all that man, all the cattle, all that, all that home. But he decided that he's going to go get the old little white man, the old little man, and kill him. He won't kill all, he won't kill none of his. He would have got the man old, one of the old little man, and took him to kill him and fed him to his friends. So when David finished, David burned, the Bible said David burned with anger. David was, when David had anger, he could die. Read the word. Mm -hmm. David was told to be king of nothing. When David got mad, he would die. And David burned with anger. The first man came out of the mouth was the first man that talked. I saw I saw him be swift. He swore on God that the man should die. What was in his heart came out of his mouth. And because he was burning hot, he said, this man should die, he should die today. You should kill everything, take everything he got, give it to the poor man. And he said, and, and, and you're going to do this because the man had no pity on the old poor man. David was quick to judge the rich man and put down the devil over him. While he himself was a double and a murder. Y'all get the picture now? David was in sin judging somebody else. Mm. How many times we find ourselves, I'm afraid that this is true for the body of Christ. We are ready to stand judgment on someone else when they sin, knowing that we ain't right ourselves. We need to stop that. We, like me, when we hear about somebody else that don't fail in the sin of brother, sister, and Christ, no matter what their titles are, if they even have a title, we quit to put them down. We quit to judge, talk about them, look across, gossip about them, say they made me good, I thought they thought they were dead. And we do it in the same breath that we know that we ain't right ourselves. That's what they did. Hey, they don't do no dog for the first. He just has somebody kill a man, he ain't gonna sit there and come up, hey, he's a guy. You are you a murderer. That's a murderer. You got to get away with it. See, when we were dead, we were getting away with our sins. We quit to judge other people in their heads. Take a lesson from me. Take a lesson from me. Let it repent. So God will call you out after a while. You just face to repent like you did today. If you don't, God will bring you out of the court for the record for everybody to vote. Take it from me. You know me and sin, you ought to be the first person by the night of Because your sin is just going to be Quiet. It should be. It should be quiet. Because that's what we got to hate the spirit. Me and sin talk about other people and sin. Ready to put down church, ready to make them to the church, ready to put them out of the church. Ready to scam the thing, ready to spam the thing, ready to say all kind of evil about it, sit at dinner and talk all about it and laugh about it. 
but you have seen yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Tell somebody to hit him with you. Because I don't know. Listen to this. But wait a minute, David. I want you to hold up for a minute, David. Maybe look at it and say, David, you can hold up for a minute. David's got mad. He's trying to grab his phone, trying to call him up at home. He said, Look, you got to teach him what you got to do. David, David, for you, for you, for you, kill him, David. Hold, hold up for a minute. Got to finish what I got to tell you. David, yeah, 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 go ahead and tell him. I'm going to tell him how to tell him. He said, David, I ain't going to tell you what the man did. Put it down, David. Put it down. You need to put this down. Be ready to kill somebody with your mouth, where they fall. And you full of sin yourself, whether it be or little, put it down. Just put it down, baby, because that man is you. The man is you, man. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one I'm talking about. You're that man. Now, you're the one who deserves to die. You're the one who deserves to die, baby. For the evil you've done. This is what it is. Now I want you to notice how David Toon changed. Because somebody hit different. When it's you. Listen to how Toon changed. When David realized he was a man, when he realized he was busted, David immediately wrote Psalm 51. Now I'm just going to quote both verses from him. When David wrote, wrote the whole Psalm 51, he realized he was busted. But I'm going to really know that. He said, um, Have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before you. Against you and you only have my sin and done what is evil in your sight. And you are right in your burden, and you are justified with your judgment. Tell somebody, you hit them when it's you. It's kill them when it's somebody else. Just put them out of church. They get the vision from them. Talk about family when it's somebody else. Just call up everybody who you think you won't tell somebody and talk about them when it's somebody else. And that's the day. But when it's you, you won't mercy. The man is going to die. The man cried out when he found out with him. Lord, have mercy on him. And witness all of God out on the to God's nature. God is compassionate. God is merciful. God is forgiven. You know all that now, baby. But you ain't do that for the man. The same thing. And I, if you don't learn nothing else from this lesson, I want you to learn this. If you learn nothing else, this is the only point you get. Want for the next man what you want for yourself. If you get nothing else out of that, please get that. The same thing you want for yourself, want it for the next man that's in sin. See, David wanted the man to die. Because David found out that he was the man he wanted to person. He wanted to live. We got to put down these David spirits. Whether somebody else, we want the worst man God can give us. Take it car off, God. Take it out of yeah, they get sick. We start to tell them, they get sick because they're not punishing them. We put everything. They do the job. Oh, see, God, man. God, man. They're not going to talk to y'all. See, they should have did what they did. We want everything to be wrong with them. But then when it's us, God has hurt for them. Please, God has hurt for them. Black out my transgressions. But you won't black out your brother's own. Or your sister's own. Can I tell you something? As I was reading this, God convicted me on it because I brought myself in sin. And he said, listen, now I want you to teach this. I want you to teach with that brick now because you carry that one. He said, now that the man is you, he said, I want you to learn from it. And I learned something. He said, what I want you to do, he told me, go get this brick. He said, put this brick out your God and put on it. That any one of you who is without sin be the first to stone me. See this brick, John 8, 7. He said, let any one of you who be without a hand be the first to cast his home. He said, I want you to clear your desk off, and I want you to sit on your desk in your office as a renowned, 
That's a reminder. To never forget. And I want you to lay down your baby to you. Because it's you now. You're that man now. And the same thing you want for you, want for other people. If I can't hear the baby tell you, listen, anybody I wrong, in my future, now I've been preaching back this year for five years, and um, praise God, you didn't see it, next month it'll be six years. But I've been preaching longer than that, it's been on the seat here as a seated pastor here, I've been preaching since 1998. And if I wrong anybody, if I step with anybody and judge somebody and talk hardly about somebody, if you've heard of me, they have said anything about you. But some of you that have been coming that came along here and raised the church with me. And we started in the little building and I let my flesh get in the way I judge according to what I thought that you did. And I may have even put some of you out. I stand in the and I apologize. And I ask your forgiveness. Because who am I? Because now I realize I need I didn't realize then that I had a baby spirit. I thought because I was teen, I could do whatever I want to get away with, but I would hold you to the letter of the law if you did it. And I'm asking you now to forgive me. Those that are watching, if you don't attend the church no more, I pray that if you're watching, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I don't want that on my conscience. I don't know how many days I got that. Up, but I'm man enough to own up to it and say, I have had a baby spirit. I have judged people and put them out of office, put them out of positions. I have put them even out of the church because of what they've done. But yet I myself have been saying. And now when I find myself falling, I want mercy, but I didn't skin to know who they needed and what they needed. And I definitely follow that. My grief will stay on my desk as a reminder to me. Every sermon I preach will never be about anybody behind the school that I will never use it. I will never use my influence. I will never use my position, my power, my name to slander anybody. If I can't help you, I won't hurt you. But I, my goal and my goal moving forward is to let this man in this hat be the same man in this suit. But I'm off the field or on the field that I can give you the best of me. And I say this because what you don't realize is that not only the person who's hurt by me saying everything something about those who talk about me. When you talk about your brother and your sister when they fall, you don't know how much damage you do. Because the person who committed the sin is just as hurt if they got too hard, they got Christ through in their heart, and they got and they truly repented, they hurt just like the person who was offended by the sin. Everybody hurts. The one that's impacted by the sin and the one who committed it is that person has true repentance in their heart. And let me tell you, when we start judging the one that's fall, we side with the one who's been hurt, but we put down the one who's fallen. This is what you do. You unknowingly help. And we have helped push some people. There are good people that made poor decisions. And they were on the edge because if you like them, and I repented of my sin, and I went to the ones who I said against, and I owned up to it. I was on the edge. I was on the edge and I was being beat and I was being convicted and my body with my own thoughts. I was putting my own self down. I was down my own salvation. I, I was so I was so hard on myself, I was on the edge and I wanted to jump. A lot of y'all they thought I wanted to commit suicide. And I was on the edge. And we don't know how many people who were there falling into sin because we got the baby spirit. We have put some people over without work. We have pushed them over without looks when they come to church and you look at them like, you know what they done. You know how many people you pushed over the edge and pushed them back into the street, pushed them back into drugs, pushed them back into drinking, and some lost their life. But I was on the edge, I didn't want the drugs, I didn't want the drinking, I didn't want to live. But I thank God. And that man you have what I have. I thank God I was on the edge and wanted to jump. And I thank God that I came. That door that he was doing me and stopped pulling me back. Because I was on the road, I caught the road tonight, I was talking to him. And I thank God that God reached me through him. And, and he had a heart of compassion to say, I've been there. I know what it's like. And you can get through this and pull me back. 
you know, and my daughter told him, they told him, they just went up at one o'clock in the morning, we're talking, and they don't find the ride with them at one or something in the morning. But they're talking to me, she called me, she pulled me back. Then I came before my members and my leaders, and I talked to them, went before my wife, and I talked to her, and each one forgave me and held me up in prayer. And I backed up that ladies. We don't know what we do to people. We don't know what we do to good brothers and sisters that make a mistake and they fall. We all sin, we all fall short of the glory. And when we should be lifting each other up. And, and, and like the Bible says, when a brother and sister fan, you who are spiritual, should go and restore them in such a way. We don't restore, we destroy. We just we get the David spirit and we want them to just die. Like they're no good. We talk them away like they're nothing. We talk to them like they're nothing. We look at them like they're nothing. We sit in church. We hear we ever heard about it. We be sitting there looking at them and rolling our eyes and mumbling under our, our breath. We don't know what that do to the person who's already fallen. But we should be loving on them and giving them a hug and trying to understand. It should be honest to say, you know what? I look better too. I look better than that before. And, and, and I want to let you know that I'm praying for you. I know what got me out of it. It, it, it can get you out of it. Keep your head up, brother. Keep your head up, sister. It's going to be all right. We don't encourage no more. We discourage. How many people we push over the edge? How many people are not here no more? How many people don't know the Lord no more? How many people have gave up on Christ? They just kept going. Because the same prophet who went to him and told him it was him. If you go up in the green, destroy the second family. With the same prophet, they said, Listen, God said, he, He's not back yet. The day was trying to go naked. Then he said, Listen, get up. God said, You're going to live. He don't forgive you. But there will be consequences. But you will live. And you will remain king. And you will remain king. That's what the real true prophet does. He didn't say, yeah, you messed up and you should die. And yeah, man, you, you'll never be king again. And if I was God, I would kill you right now. He said, don't get up. And he listened to God and said, I'll get up, man. I know you feel bad about what you've done. I see it. I see it in you. I see you feel bad. God sees you. Man, let me tell you, you still look at me. You just made a, you just messed up. You still look at me. Get up. Get up. Come on, man. Get yourself together. God wants you to know that you still me. He's still king in his eyes. He wants you to know he's forgiven you. He still loves you. Amen. He still has a plan for your life, man. And so, you have to read. From that point on, you read how David reigned. From that point on, you read how he reigned. You read how he reigned and led Israel until his day of his death. Read how he reigned. Reign superior. And if they would have pushed them away, they would have took it all life. That's how much guilt he had. He would have took it all life. That's how much guilt he had. But they would have lifted him up. We need to be lifting people up. Yeah, it hurt them. Yeah, the things that they do sometimes, people do the other people, do people don't feel good. But. Amen. But he did it anyway. He just didn't feel good either. But he did it anyway. And he did it with full knowledge of what we'll be right now in 2021. He did it with full knowledge. So if that's you, you found yourself wrong. You felt in the same. I don't know what it is you could have done. You don't even have to tell me. But what I've done now is I'm trying to all the people who are impacted by it. I want you to know this when you get back home. I want to be here to encourage you to get back up. My brother, my sister, get back up. You may be hurt right now. You may feel the door of your life. You may not even feel like you're living. But I'm telling you, life is worth living. God ain't finished with you yet. He still has a plan for your life. You may get you messed up. There may be some consequences behind it. But God is still merciful. And He's still gracious. And He still wants to use you. You are somebody. You are somebody. You need somebody to talk to call 803. 507 9207 call me. I'll pray with you. I won't gossip about it. I won't tell anybody about it. It will be between me and you because I need help myself. I know it's like to meet somebody to help pull you back and to help strengthen you when you're weak. I'm right here for you. I'm right here for you. 
you can give your life right back to God right now. Like I have you. Can you can just lay it out before God right now. And you say, Lord, forgive me. Open up to you saying, I'm nervous. I thought I was a little bit of yesterday. Why is the Holy Bible in the skin? You said, come in. You said, he's faithful to forgive you of your sins. Open up to you from all the rest of it. Don't come with excuses. Don't come with excuses. Don't come with that. This person did this, but that's why I did that. But this person did this, but I did that. You come with you. You come by yourself and say, I need you, God. I lay the money right now with you. I'm on. Confess to God. Then he said, Confess to people. He said, Confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. Now you need healing. So you need to go to the people who God needs you to, who may be impacted. Only the people who are being impacted by the Lord are oh, your fault, oh, your mess up, your mistake, your sin. Only those that are impacted that recognize all the people you go to. And you don't go make your excuse again. You go talk just like you went to God and you tell them. No matter how embarrassing it may be, you tell them what you've done. And they'll go with you. And God will work in them to work with you and lift you back up. So that you can be healed, man, because you need to be healed. And once you heal, get up. Because the Bible says, right, you may have seven times to get back up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. For those that are watching, that have that danger to me, I only can warn you, because I had to learn it for myself. They hit the nickel. Look at you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.